And I'm Callie Lewis. Welcome back to Talk Mobile 2013, or 2013 as John likes Thank to say. Thank you <laughs> Thank you. And we are having a great time. It is Friday. If you're a developer, I'm just going to call it out and say we saved the best for last. Yeah, I think we week. did. Because question number one is how do I get my app featured? Are you talking about on our websites or in the All app of stores? the above. Okay. Anywhere I can get it featured, how do I how to make that happen? So Phil, I'll I'll start with our websites. No, right? no, no, no. Number one number one thing, have a good app. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Content is I'll give that shit. I mean it's kind of a given, but it's not. No, no, no. We totally get tons of emails yeah. every day with, with horrific apps with really bad interfaces pranks and stuff saying, feature me, feature me. Uh, no. It's a good point. Developers need to set their expectations. Yep. If they've built something truly original, truly unique, it's native to the platform, it stands out, we want to cover it, right? Our, our readers will want to know, and, and for the app stores, their users are going to want to know. Know your community. For Windows Phone, if you make an app, you have to follow the Metro or modern UI guidelines. If you don't do that and just bring over a port and make it look like iOS, the community is going to react very negatively to it and it shows also you don't know who you're building your app for so make sure you are aware of what people like and what the trends are for so let's assume just the table stakes here have been met I built a really good app I literally have no idea what to do next I mean I can submit it to the app store done it's in the app store but then, how do I, I even reach you guys? Yeah, how do should I, reach I tweet you? Should Callie? I email how do I, what do you? I do? What? You should do all of those things. But I, I, like, I have this basic rule because there's so many apps on the App Store. I literally get 200 emails some days just for apps. And my basic rule, and it sounds terrible, is if a human didn't write it, a human's not going to read it. So I can't take 200 press releases in a day. It's physically impossible. But if you send me a short note that just says, you know, this is my app, this is why it's awesome, this is why your audience is going to love it. That makes my job easier, it makes your app more understandable, and it makes me understand why I should be promoting your app. For me, it's the shows. It's actually meeting people. When I, see, when I get to meet a developer, see their face, I can put a face to an app, and you get to meet some really interesting people that way, and then you get to learn about more other apps they might do or other people they know. I remember people from my first week on the job in this business who might not necessarily even work with that app anymore, but I remember them, and then now I get to know about new apps that they're working with. I was gonna, for me, I was going to say make it easy. Uh, <laughs> give me the link to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Give me images of your app. Give me a video of your app. Give me the app. I think it goes a long way for developers if they really just think like bloggers. I mean, bloggers love exclusives. Give us a preview of your app. It's a guaranteed way we're going to blog it if we know we're getting it first before anybody else. And if, if it's an interesting app, I don't mind helping out. A lot of times we get asked to beta test something. Absolutely. And, and, and apps that aren't finished yet and are still kind of broken. What do you think of this? What do you think we could do better? And, and not necessarily on a granular level. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here and give a little summary because this is so important it's worth calling out. I hope you guys are hearing that everyone is telling you you basically have to take a personal interest in the blogger, the person running the app store, wherever you want to get reviewed, you have to show them that you know who they are personally and you think that you have something of interest to them. No form letters, individual emails written to that person specifically showing that you have an interest in them. I think the number one thing a developer can do is engage with our user communities. Mm -hmm. And this I've seen mm -hmm. literally hundreds of times over the years. If a developer becomes a member on our sites, gets beta testers through our communities, before they even launch the app, they're building up a loyal following of users. When they go live in their app store, five-star ratings, good reviews. If somebody comes along and gives a one-star review, it's not the developer having to defend the app. It's actually their following they've built up who gets in there and straightens out the message. And, and it's not just about triage and crisis management. It, it, if you take a more proactive stance at it, you know, here's the developer who says, you're, you know, I think you're right. I think we can do that a little better. Thanks for the idea. And it, I know it's tough to get, you know, not to get defensive, and there are just a lot of bad comments out there. One of the things that I think is critically important is that everyone knows you need a developer to make an app, and everyone knows you need a designer to make an app. You need to consider marketing as important as mm -hmm. development and design. It reminds me of the fact that you prefer, you're a more introverted person. You prefer to be, you know, more solitary. But you know that social media is something you have to participate in. These developers who want to get their applications seen 
how do you feel uh, they have to act in terms of what they want versus what they need? Yeah, I mean, I get pinged a lot on Twitter, people ask. And if I don't respond personally, it doesn't mean I didn't read it or I'm not considering it. It just means I just don't have time to respond. But that also doesn't give you carte blanche to go and, like, say, spamming comments. I've seen this developer try to get our attention. Maybe we didn't respond or we just didn't cover their app, but also they go into our comments and start linking to their app. That's a big red flag. Don't do that because now you're going to really start to agitate. Don't look too needy for your app. If it's good, we'll cover it. One of the other big questions is how do I get the big app stores themselves to cover my product? And I would, I would argue because we know many of the people behind these app stores they often learn about the apps from us. When we cover an app and feature it on our site uh, and people respond positively to it, it's not unusual that a couple of days later it gets featured in the store. And that's because Microsoft watches us. And so that's really where the process starts is you find the biggest sites out there that cover those apps, get your app featured. Uh, we've got more coming up next week, so don't get lazy over the weekend and forget to come back. That's right. We'll see you next time. I'm John P. I'm Callie Lewis. Bye-bye.